Hello and welcome to Core Basics Coding Tutorial. Today's topic is functions in Julia. Now we all programmers love functions very much. They make our life very easy. So let's talk about them. And here is a list of items we are covering in this video. Okay, as usual, I'm going to use juliabox.org for this tutorial. We are going to type it in into Julia Notebook. Uh, if you have Julia Terminal installed on your local PC, you can use that as well. Okay, so I'll sign in via Google and I will create a Julia Notebook by going to New Menu, click on the latest version. I'm going to click on this one. Okay, let's jump straight away into writing our first function. The way you write function in Julia is using function f, so that's the name of your function, enter, and let's say this sum just, this function just does the sum of two numbers. So I will say return x plus y, and to end the function you have to use and keyword. This indicates the function body is now complete. It it has ended okay alt enter to execute any line in Julia notebook as usual okay so this define our first function now let's call it excellent so it gives this result back now uh, if you are new to programming uh, just to cover the definition of function function is nothing but a code block that performs a well-defined task. Here that well-defined task is adding two numbers. So this code block perform that function and now you can call f this function any number of times to execute this code. Okay. Now there is another compact way of defining the same function which is this. You can do F of, f of x y is equal to x plus y this will also do the same thing so it's essentially the same it has the same effect it's just a very compact way of writing a small function now of course if your function is big you don't want to do it this way but if it is small like adding two numbers then you can certainly go with this option okay now in Julia, you don't need to always return a value. It will by default return the value of the last line of execution in your code. So if I define the same function f and I just do, uh, sorry, I, I hit alt enter. That's why you have to hit enter and I will just do x plus y and n. Now notice that I'm not returning a value here. Here I was returning it. Uh, let's see what happens. Nice. So even if you don't return a value here, by default, it will always return a value of last line that it executed in that function body. Okay. Uh, now, if you explicitly return a value, then it will stop execution after that point. So for example, again, I'm going to write the same function and I'm going to return a value saying x plus y and then I will do x multiplied by y. Okay. And if I do, if I call that function again, Notice that it is uh, giving me sum as an output. So it executed this line, return x plus y. After that, it didn't went any further. So this line had no meaning, okay? So once you explicitly write return, it will always return from that point. If you don't write return, let's say if you don't write this, then it will always execute this one. So for example, if my function body was like this, let me quickly show you and if i do this then it is going to go down and it is going to multiply these two numbers and since this was the last line in the function that's what it returned back okay 
Now, how do you return multiple values? To return multiple values, you can do something like this. Again, the same function and I'm going to return two values now, which is a plus b and a multiplied by b. As I told you before, I don't need to write return statement, it will always return. So to return multiple values, you just return them by separating them by comma. Okay, now when I do that, and if I call it again, interesting so it returns a tuple back tuple means a sequence of multiple values so here the first one was the sum of these two numbers which was three and four was seven that's why i got seven here the second one was multiplication between the two arguments so three into four was 12 and that's what i got back you can also do something like this that way you store the value of those two return values into two dis distinct variables so when i i do now x it says seven and y will uh, show me 12. the next item is operators are functions what does it mean when you do any operation like this uh, your, your this plus here is called an operator it is an addition operator okay uh, now this operator right here is also a function so you can do the same thing using this syntax so as if i'm calling this function so op plus is the operator which is also a function and you can call it using the function syntax and it does the same thing same thing with the multiplication operator you can multiply by two number by this or you can use the function syntax like this if you really want to call a function by some english name then you can assign operator to that english string so if i want to say foo equal to plus okay and if i say foo two and three it's gonna do some of those two functions now as you notice here I can assign operator which is a function to a variable name what this means is functions are first class objects in Julia uh, so you can actually assign function to a variable so let's do that for example our last function so I'm just going to simply define the same function again and I'm going to now let's say assign that function to a variable called G. So you you treat it literally F as your first class object and assign to a variable. So now when you use that variable to call a function, it will work. Okay. Uh, second thing is function can also be used as a, a function argument. Okay, so you have a function that you use an argument for another function and the standard example for that is the map function. So map function in Julia, what it does is it takes the first argument of this function is a function and the second argument is a list. So for example, if I have a list here, list or an array, that is that will be my second argument and my first argument will be function itself so i can literally define a function like this okay and i can do something like x multiplied by 2 let's say i i have this array and i want to multiply all the elements of this array with 2 and return back uh, the second array which has all those results in it so you can do something like this and when you say all enter what just happened here is it went through all the elements in the array and it then treated each of these elements as x here and it multiplied them by two 
and the return value was another array with all those results filled in. This helps whenever you want to do a quick transformation on one array and generate the second array. Okay, so as you noticed, function was used as an argument to another function. Similarly, uh, a function can be returned as a return value from any other function. Uh, that's why uh, functions are first class objects in Julia. Another way of doing the same thing will be to use this syntax where you will say x and hyphen arrow x comma 2 1 2 3 this will have the same effect but it is more compact format it is same as this one but little bit uh, compact okay uh, the next item is optional arguments uh, whenever you're calling any function sometimes you don't want to supply one or the other argument so our standard function which does the sum of two number let's say if you don't want to supply it's the second number then this is how you uh, initialize the default value of an argument what it means is if I when, when I call f function and if I don't supply the second argument then by default it will take the value to be 5 okay so x plus y and now if I call it with the second argument then this 5 will not have any impact okay so when I do this is gonna show me 7 it's not gonna show me 8 right like 3 plus 5 8 it's not like that but if I don't supply the second argument which I'm going to do right now then it will be 8 because the 3 went into X and there was no Y and it used 5 as the value of Y okay uh, the last item is the keyword argument sometimes when you're defining a function the argument list is pretty long okay now until now we were using the position argument position argument means x and y if you look at these two arguments x is the first argument y is the second one and we are using position here so three since it is first that goes into x y, four since it is second it goes into y but if your list is too long, it might be cumbersome. You have to see, you know, like what three means. Three means X, four means Y. You have to kind of map that. Uh, if you don't want to do that, then you can use something called a keyword argument. So let's define our function, which is a division with a keyword argument. Now the way you specify keyword argument is you start with a semicolon and then you uh, write down your keyword arguments and the important thing here is you have to always initialize uh, your keyword argument with a default value okay uh, let's do this so this function just divides the first number by the second number now when you normally call it okay uh, when you say x equal to 10 or let's say x equal to 20 and y is equal to 10 okay when you do that it works so x is 20 y is 10 now it will also work even if the order of these two arguments is different because now we are explicitly saying that 20 is x and 10 is y so the order here doesn't matter so see it gives you the same result okay so that was all about functions in julia thanks for watching bye bye